If I could pick one thing that we could do very quickly, I would destroy yeah. Facebook and Twitter. Twitter has just become a cesspool of misinformation. I, I don't even look at my feed anymore because it's all Russian propaganda and Bitcoin bros and um, Elon fanatics. It, and, and, you know, I don't engage with any of those people, but now that is my entire feed. Uh, when, when Elon released the, the, the algorithm, we found out that he was pushing Ukraine news below disinformation, which like took half of the use that I had for uh, Twitter and just removed it. And then in the case in the Facebook, they are still actively marketing your personal data to not just political folks, but uh, fraudsters and foreign governments. And the fact that we're still allowing that to stand just horrifies me. No. So the way the Chinese government uses TikTok is TikTok obviously has to archive all the data. And then when the Chinese government wants information on a person, they basically deliver the equivalent of a court order to TikTok, who then provides the information requested. That's bad. That should stop. I have no problem banning TikTok because of that. Mm -hmm. What Facebook does is it gathers your data without anyone asking and then actively mm -hmm. goes out to find buyers, which include the Chinese government. So in the case of TikTok, the Chinese government has to choose to come after you. In the case of Facebook, Facebook helps the Chinese government mm -hmm. identify the people that the Chinese government might, might want to go after. One of these is an order of magnitude worse than the other. They should both go away. And the way you get around the free speech issue is you don't ban the technology. You just destroy the platform and put a few people in jail. Can we do that? Do we have the legal mechanism? Not without yeah, Congress. No. We would need to revise the 1996 inter, I'm sorry, the, the, the Internet Communications Law, uh, which basically says that no platform is liable for anything done or said on their platforms. The things that Tucker Carlson says on air, I can't say that in a book because that is illegal. That's slander. The reason that Tucker has been ousted is because people sued him for slander. Now, if he does this on Twitter, he's free and clear. This yeah. is not the first time that we have dealt with a new communications technology that has proven problematic. The last time, the last big one was the telegraph. That took us 40 years. Mm, oh. Okay. I'm well, hoping that's... this one will be a little bit faster. Yeah, but it's so much more widespread than the telegraph, right? You know, in order yeah. to send the telegraph. You know, it's in everyone's hand. Right, 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 right. And everyone's constantly checking it. Constantly checking it because, you know, it's being programmed that not way. So you anymore, but yes. Break the platform, not the technology. We need, ultimately, an act of Congress to regulate what is protected speech and what is not. And by introducing a degree of responsibility to the platform in the next iteration, should clean this up. That is fraught. That is unavoidably fraught. But that's where we have to go. It used to be that you could yell fire in a movie theater. Until we decided that was no longer kosher and it could no longer be productive speech. We have to do the same thing for this platform now. The problem we're going to have is not so much the millennials who we all think of as, you know, tech savvy, but Gen Z. Now, they're not really politi politically active yet, but they tend to be loners. They tend to be online a lot. Uh, they don't have a lot of close personal friends. The ones they have, they're very loyal to, but they're digitized on everything. everything. And if we can't fix these platforms soon, then they will be growing into adulthood in that sort of environment. And you know, that's not going to help anyone. We don't talk enough. about a European style demographic bomb hitting the United States. It's if the Zoomers continue to be as isolated as they are in an yeah. era of social media. <sighs> How are we going to grow out of this? Any idea? That's the question. We need to help them by providing a better means of communication. Now, the United States is in the midst of a labor shortage, which is one of the reasons that I think a more open immigration system would be good. Uh, I'm also not blind about this, and it has to happen in a legal way. We haven't had meaningful reform of the immigration system since 1987. It's time for Congress yeah. to pick this up again. And there's a lot of, I don't want to say easy fixes, but relatively quick ones. Now, what's going on at the border at the moment is Donald Trump had a series of policies, which included Title 42 as a COVID method, that allowed the federal government to basically kick people across the border back to Mexico. The problem with that is because it was based on health as opposed to status or legalities, they could just turn around and come right back in. And so we got this laundry machine churn at the border for the last three years. And when Biden came in, 
there were a lot of folks within the Democratic coalition who were relatively pro-immigration, primarily because Donald Trump was anti-immigration. And so when Biden inherited this problem, he ended up using most of the same tools that the Trump administration used. But because he was perceived as being less anti-migration, people just kept jumping into that laundry machine. Mm -hmm. So what is happening right now, the week of, um, let's see, it's May 12th when I'm saying this, is that the Biden administration has done away with Title 42 and put in a two-pronged program. Now, this has only been in place for like two days, so God knows if it's going to work. Uh, but step one is doing something we have not done since the 70s and sending staff down to Central America to run processing centers. The idea is you register with American immigration before you even leave your country. And so if you've got a claim of prosecution or asylum, you know, they can re resolve that hopefully fairly quickly and have larger, more robust, more reliable means for legal migration. However, if you show up at the border without having first gone to the processing center, they've changed the definition of asylum so that 99% of people crossing the border automatically do not qualify. So for example, if you start in Honduras and you pass through Guatemala and Mexico on your way there, you are automatically disqualified because if you are going for asylum, that means you're scared to live at home and you crossed any international border on your way, well, clearly you're lying. And so they don't even have to look at your case. And if you do that, you cannot even apply at a processing center for the next five years. The goal is to end the laundry machine. Now, will this work? God knows. And there are other clauses in this that various folks across the country don't have problems with. So the legal challenges have already begun. But for the first time since Reagan, we're trying something new. The goal is to have enough staff there that within 20, 12 to 24 hours, you can give them a yes or a no. And by eliminating asylum as an option, almost no one is going to qualify. Now, like I said, this has only been in place for a couple of days, and there was a huge surge of people that came up in the last couple of weeks. There was a huge surge of people yeah. waiting, and they've all just pushed across. So in the short term, this isn't going to do jack. But on right. the, in the longer term, assuming that the pieces can hold, it's an interesting idea. I'm not saying it's going to work. I don't know. There's mm -hmm. too much at stake. I'm sorry, I phrased that wrong. There's too many moving pieces. Mm -hmm. And the legalisms and the legal challenges, of course, are going to complicate things. But by eliminating the asylum category, and that's how almost everyone has crossed the border in the last six years. Yeah. Uh, that's going to, at a minimum, buy us some time. It's a new policy. It was right. only released this week. They're still teaching the staff how to deal with it. Mm -hmm. And those centers down in like Honduras and Guatemala and El Salvador, they're only now getting set up. Mm -hmm. So, you know, this is the plan for moving forward. We're now in a transition. Strikes me. It strikes as, me as long as that laundry machine function is in play, this is not going to work. The, the goal is to end that. Mm -hmm. There is definitely a little bit of... Um, Stockton Freud going on here uh -huh. as I see firms like Apple that have just consistently done the dumbest possible thing regard to China. Now all of a sudden like desperate and scrabbling like a, like a dog on a tile floor trying to change track. And honestly, I'm really enjoying it. Politics are different because in part because of where we are politically in part because of what the Russians have done, the threshold for political violence has dropped. And so when I see people who are simply trying to report the truth in journalism or people who are actively trying to lie, the difference between having a civil discourse and actually wielding force against a fellow citizen, you know, those lines are a lot closer than they used to. And I haven't been like beaten up or shot at yet. But it is problematic that an increasing percentage of the American population says publicly that it's okay to use violence when you don't get your way politically. Not, not even because they think it was a rigged election, just because they think the other people are wrong. Yeah. That will have consequences if we can't get that under control. And that's one of the big reasons why I'm really hopeful that this is going to be our last presidential cycle with the old political structures. Uh, in a new, more stable system, each party will police their own to a degree. And I'm really ready to be there.